book, turn over to number 490. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and has now gone above. Revive us again, all right? 490, and let's stand together to sing it. Brother Bible, lead us. On that first together, we praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee. Spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. On that last, revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. So be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All right, good singing. And uh, good to see you here tonight. Looking forward to a good service together here this evening. And uh, appreciate you making the effort and coming out tonight. Let's open with prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for the Wednesday night. And Lord, we always look forward to the midweek service and getting together with the people of God. And Lord, thank you for bringing each one here safely tonight. Uh, we do pray for those unable to be with us this evening because of illness. And Lord, we pray your healing hand to be upon them. This evening, Lord, they could be back with us by the Lord's day. Now, Father, we pray that you'll meet with us here this evening. We need to hear from you tonight. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to focus, to put out of our mind things that would grab our attention, uh, things that would uh, cause us to miss what you have for us tonight in this service. So, Lord, help us to, as the Scripture admonishes us, to gird up the loins of our mind and to be focused on what you would want to say to your church this evening and make this service pleasing in your sight. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 488, 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. We're going to sing all three stanzas together tonight. 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. In the book is written, saved by grace oh the joy that came to my soul now i 
am forgiven and I found that the blood I am there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robed angels sing the story a sinner has come home for there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine with my sins forgiven i am bound for Um, uh, the usher is word brother Terry you have that paper get some guys to help you he's got a handout here I want you to get just a cover letter here of the Zimmermans uh, they are celebrating their 40th anniversary on the mission field and uh, amazing they've been working with Jewish people since 1975 this church has supported them since 1976 so next year will be 40 years this church has supported them and so they sent a nine page letter <laughs> updating their 40 years and such and this had their original prayer card on it in 1975 or and then their card in 2015 and it lists their family and their address where they are and uh, their children and things like that so I thought that might be of interest to you and kind of get a picture of who we're uh, who we're talking about and I'm just going to try to hit some of the highlights of their letter all right and uh, this uh, some of you folks who've been around the church for a while, you will know the Zimmermans and recognize them, and others, they're brand new to you. <clears throat> but um, do you have enough to get everybody? Husbands and wives may have to share a picture if you don't mind, and uh, that would be good. Yeah, they got a couple over here, guys, if you need them. Okay, you got enough? Did you run out? Everybody have one? Anybody need one? Okay, you got them. They're covered. You got it. All right. Very good. He said, um, he says, uh, through 40 years, we've tried everything we can think of to reach the Jewish community with the gospel. And he lists some of the most productive. He said, number one, visitation. It is quite difficult to show up uninvited in the Jewish community, but we have knocked on countless thousands of Jewish doors. The main hurdle in this type of visitation is 99.9% .9 of the Jewish people are just as sure they don't want to be a Christian as you are sure that you don't, you don't want to become a Buddhist. All right? In spite of this, God has prepared some who want the truth. For instance, Jackie Pultman said, You must be angels. I was just asking God I'd have my sins forgiven, and you knocked on my door. Mrs. Weiner said, Please come in and show my husband and children that Jesus is the Messiah, but use our Jewish Bible. After several hours, she lit up like a light and said, The rabbis have not told us the truth. Jesus is the Messiah. Sigmund Blatt said, I would like to know my sins are forgiven. Alan Camden said, Please <clears throat> come tell me how to know my sins are forgiven. It is the day after Yom Kippur, Kippur, and I prayed all day to be forgiven. Nothing has worked. Mr. and Mrs. Goldstein said, Please come to our house and tell us what the Bible says we must do to have our sins forgiven. And Moshe Rhyme said, Please visit my wife and two daughters. They are not saved. Over time, all three accepted Christ as their Savior. Uh, Diana Collins said, please visit my sister Sherry. Her life is a wreck, and I think she will listen to you and artists. Both Sherry and her husband accepted Jesus as their Savior. And he has some pictures there of them. I'll, I'll make sure this makes its way to the table downstairs so you can, you can look at these pictures. You'll enjoy it. That's visitation. The second means he used, he said, was organized Bible studies. That has resulted in several Jewish people uh, coming to a clear understanding of God's plan of salvation. Um, M Y, my Weintraub, W E I N T R A U B, said about his family, They can't stop me now. I want to follow the Lord and believer's baptism. And this Jewish girl on, did, on the right, which shows a picture, did the, did the same. Baptism after accepting Jesus as Savior is a really big step for Jewish people. 
um, Marion Nettel came to many, many Bible studies and finally said, Jesus of Isaiah chapter 53 is Messiah ben Yosef and was, was saved, all right? Then it, it says, God led us to teach in many churches, schools, homes, countries, and we constantly receive, receive reports of people praying for the Jewish people, Jews being witnessed to and Jews receiving Christ as their Savior. For 40 years, Artis and I have been used as a guide, as, you have used as a guide this verse in Ecclesiastes 11.6. In the morning, sow thy seed, and in the evening, withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not, whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. That's a good verse. Then he said another means they've used, third is Passover. <clears throat> we started inviting Jewish people to a meal called Passover Seder in 1981. We knew most Jews are excited to have a Passover Seder as we are to have Christmas. The only problem is it's a great deal of work and, and cost to have the Seder. Our Seder started out with about 12 or 18 in attendance. That grew through the year to 125, then 220, then 250, and then 325, and finally 365 in attendance. Now, this service allows from two to two and a half hours of good evangelistic Bible teaching about the Lamb and His purpose. And we can think, we, we use as many visual aids to point to a lamb as we can think of. Roast lamb, a live lamb, to see and hear, lamb candle holders, a video of a lamb, and songs about the Lamb of God. It's much easier to get a crowd of Jewish people to attend the Seder than to get them to come to church. And from the 90s until 2002, uh, we conducted our Seders bilingual, English and Russian, as the meals drew in quite a number of Jews fleeing the former Soviet Union. Artis has cooked over 7,000 pounds of lamb for these satyrs over the years. That's amazing, isn't it? He said, uh, then he has the, the printing ministry. Uh, our ministry to Jews has used millions of tracts. We started early. Around, around 1977, we saw that it would be impossible to afford this much literature unless we printed it ourselves. We were using about 8,000 gospel tracts every six weeks for several years. The first tract we printed was a search for atoning blood. It's a good thing we started printing when we were very young and not very bright. Everything that could go wrong did, but that did not matter. In spite of everything, we felt quite blessed that the, of the Lord that he would use us. A pastor friend of mine near the Jewish community in St. Louis had a print shop and offered to print tracts for our work. Someone had just given him a full train car box car full of paper, and he printed our first few tracks. I just I went over to have him print another tract, and just as the press started running, the phone rang. He asked me to watch the press while he answered the phone. Well, when he left the room, paper started flying out of the press like a blown out of a house, scattering paper everywhere. He never returned from that phone call, and that is how I learned how to run a printing equipment. It. <laughs> It took me about a year to finally realize why the train load of free paper was free. It really was junk paper. <laughs> uh, and so he said, my first press, how about this? My first press was given to me by Bearing Precious Seed uh, Ministry out of Ohio. It was, and um, he had to rebuild it, but it didn't matter. He said, we put out an amazing amount of gospel literature. Uh, about eight years later, someone gave us a much newer press, and... I realized that most of the problems had not been my fault, but they were problems because your equipment just would not work like it was designed. And uh, so he started printing higher quality literature, and they, he shows some of the tracks here that they have printed. Uh, the widely received and read literature we ever printed was the Book of Revelation in Hebrew and English. We have printed uh, 5,000 copies of that book. And I've always wanted some larger organization like Bearing Precious Seed to print the Revelation. The world seems ready to read this book. It contains all the major Bible doctrines. When I was a nine-year-old boy, I accepted Jesus as my Savior reading the Revelation. And uh, so it's, that, that was another ministry they had. Then he goes on to, to talk about, okay, Odessa, d the different languages they printed in, too. It's amazing. Um, Anyway, I'll let you read that. I can't, can't take time to read all the college campus work. They've worked on some college campuses. 
They are working with Hebrew manuscripts now, their most recent thing uh, that they have. Their, their website, by the way, is uh, scrolls, the number four, and then all.org. Scrollsforall.org, and the number four, not spelled out four. And at www, of course, all right? Scrollsforall.org. And you can go there and get the updates and see what they're doing with different uh, scrolls now. It's really something. And what they're looking for now is somebody who is familiar with the Russian language. Uh, they had a contact in Russia, but he's in Odessa near the Black Sea, and they're, they're saying that they're really concerned what Putin is going to do with that city, and he's, their contact is kind of concerned about getting his family to safety if uh, war breaks out, and so he is uh, kind of off the, off the grid right now. All right. So he says, prayer requests that our children, all our grandchildren, will accept Christ as their Savior, that I would be able to finish the website, uh, scrollsforall.org, and that God will be pleased with the work that Artis and I are doing to help Jewish people find Jesus the Messiah. And uh, it's a great, great, great pictures, great report, and uh, wow, 40 years staying at it. And uh, I like that, don't you? That's a great thing. Okay, uh, get your prayer guide out. Anybody need one? Anybody need one? Thanks. All right. All right. We'll start in the back with the coming events. And uh, remember, are you inside uh, tomorrow night down at the prison? Appreciate you praying for that. And then our uh, Reformers Unanimous here on Friday night from 7 to 9. And uh, we had... A good crowd here Friday night. In fact, we had uh, five come in for the first time on uh, Friday evening, and uh, that was a blessing. And so it's uh, it's going good on Friday nights. Our soul winning and bus visitation Saturday, uh, 10 a.m. right here in the auditorium, and we can come out and get going on that. Ladies, of course, have your retreat this weekend, and you, you, those of you going on that will know about that. You have a ladies' night out on March 23rd, uh, Monday night at 6:30. Uh, Andy will be having his three-on-three -three basketball tournament again on Saturday, March 28th at the Urban Crest Y. That's from 11 to 3. Get a chance to stop over there. be a good thing. And uh, he's getting flyers out to all the public schools around here and uh, trying to get some of the guys to come out and participate in that. It's a good evangelistic uh, time, good time to preach the gospel to these fellas. And then, of course, the cantata, Lift Him Up, April 4 and 5 and Resurrection Sunday, and our special offering on that day. Be praying for that. Okay, on the inside, uh, we praise the Lord for the good attendance at the prison last week and the 14 that were received Christ their Savior and a good Sunday with morning and evening attendance. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, different church requests and ministries. And then, of course, our uh, health uh, issues there. Good to have Lindy back in church tonight, and uh, good to see Carol in church tonight, man. Just get get cut on one day, come to church the next day. Why not? And uh, that's there she is, and uh, glad she's here this evening, and uh, continue to pray for healing for both of them. And uh, you want to add uh, uh, on the, let's see, Marjorie Thornton. I think she's a second one there. I got an update here from uh, Pete and Emma. Right before church, they said, really pray for her. Uh, the, the lungs are really filling up with fluid, and you really want to keep her in prayer, okay? So uh, be praying for her. And then add at the bottom, if you would, David Wharton. Would you add him in? Most of you know David, uh, did our uh, Heather's brother, and uh, done a lot of the air conditioning and work around here. He's back at OSU Hospital right now uh, with some heart issues and a fever, it says. So... Let's be praying for David, okay? And continue to pray for those in authority. Pray for these uh, battling cancer. And, of course, these on our salvation list for them to come to know Christ as their Savior. And our military. And then, of course, our missionaries highlighted by the Zimmerman family. All right? Brother Wallace, would you come up tonight and lead us in our prayer this evening? And as uh, Brother Bob comes and he prays audibly, let's pray along with him silently. And uh, let's unite our hearts together in prayer. Brother Bob. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord, we serve a great God. Lord, we, uh, we want to do your will as we come to your house tonight. We want our spirit to be in tune with your spirit. 
as the word of God is preached. We want to uh, be taught. We want to grow in knowledge and wisdom. We desire to hear from you through the speaker that uh, you've put on his heart to give us tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word. Your word is truth. That's why we can stand here, we can sit here tonight and bow our heads and in our hearts humble ourselves to you and yet come to your throne with boldness and make our requests known unto you knowing that you hear and you answer without a doubt. Lord, we love you. We think about the missionaries. We think about Brother Zimmerman and the rest of the missionaries that have been on the field for the many, many years. And I think about him and Brother Mullins and uh, Brother Fitzsimmons and many more that have been, just those three have probably exceeded 100 years in the mission field. And Father, uh, we uh, think about those people who have sacrificed to be where you would want them to be, but yet, Lord, their lives have been happy because they've served you. Lord, we would ask that you would continue to bless their work. Lord, help them to grow. Keep them safe. Keep their wives safe. Keep them from evil. Lord, help them to walk the straight and narrow way. As Brother Zimmerman requested that we pray for his children, his grandchildren, that they would receive Christ. Lord, we put them up to you tonight. Lord, even when we forget to pray for them in the future, Lord, touch our hearts and bring their, their children to our mind that we would call out to you again. But Lord, we realize that you never forget. The prayers that we've prayed years ago are still in a, in a pile there, in a jar. You keep them. And you, you, you answer them perfectly. And Lord, we want to thank you for that. Father, we thank you for uh, bringing uh, uh, Carol and, and uh, back to us uh, safe. And Lord, uh, thank you that you uh, had the doctors do such a magnificent surgery. Lord, we would pray that she would uh, continue to recover. Lindy, that uh, she would continue to recover. And Lord, we thank you for her presence tonight in your house where she desires to be. And Father, I just uh, uh, pray for those and who are in uh, authority. Lord, the wickedness of our, our uh, leaders of the world, our leaders of our nation. Uh, Lord, it just seems like that they, they've forgotten about God, the all-sovereign creator. And Lord, we would just ask that you would uh, work a work that would uh, get their attention. Lord, we pray ultimately for their souls that they would cry out to you and realize that eternity is either in heaven or in hell. And Father, I just uh, want to thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be in your house tonight. And Father, I, I pray for the coming events of our church the RU ministry, especially in the prison, Lord, and here at our church, where we can be a part of, and all the RU ministries around the world, wine, but Lord, especially for the ones which we can be a part of, Lord, use us in, in a way that uh, only the sovereign God could get the credit for what is the work that is going on. Father, bless the prison ministry. Lord, help those uh, gentlemen to uh, do their work, do their uh, challenges. Lord, help them to get serious, to help them to be serious, help them to stay steadfast, unmovable. Father, we thank you for each and every uh, teaching that goes on here at our church. We thank you for the, our teachers. We thank you for our song leader and and Lord, the choir, the members of the choir, and, and all the members here at Bible Baptist Church, and we have so many members that do different things. We have a good group of people here who desire to 
see you work in and through our lives. And Lord, we would, uh, we would be careful and to give you all the credit and praise for it. Now, Lord, as we come to this time where we open up your word, Father, bless your word and bless our spirits with your word. We ask these things in the holy name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Number 90 in your hymnal, nine zero. More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Let's stand one more time as we sing. Number nine zero. More love to thee. On that first together. More love to thee, O Christ, more love to thee. Hear thou the prayer I make. And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. Come back and sing that last stanza together. Sing that last together, then shall my latest breath whisper thy praise. Then shall my latest breath whisper thy praise. This be the parting cry, my heart shall raise. More love of Christ 
Be seated if you will. Ushers will come and we'll get the offering tonight. Again, we'll take our offering and go towards our country fair. Big day coming up in May. And uh, we'll ask the Lord's blessing on the offering tonight. Brother Paul Abel, I'd like you to pray for us, please. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Thank you for the word of God that you brought here at this church and that's preached and we just pray that you'd be with the preacher tonight as he brings the word, that you'd bless him, and we pray that each one of us would listen to the word that is preached and be able to use it in our daily lives. We pray that you'd uh, be with the money that comes in tonight. We pray that each person would be a cheer cheerful giver, and then we pray for those that disperse the money, that it be spent wisely to take care of the outreaches that we have here at this church, and we thank you for the outreaches we have, the bus ministry and the are you both here and at the prison? We thank you for that. We thank you for the men that are coming to know you as Christ, a Savior, and we pray that you'd help them to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we just pray that you'd be with us tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Someday the silver cord will break, and I no more as now shall sing. But oh, the joy when I shall wake within the palace of the king. And I shall see him face to face, and tell the story saved by grace. And I shall see him face to face And tell the story saved by grace Someday when fades the golden sun Beneath the rosy tinted west My blessed Lord will say well done And I shall enter into rest Someday till then I'll watch and wait, my lamp all trimmed and burning bright. And when my Savior opes the gate, my soul to him may take its flight. And I shall see him face to face, and tell the story saved by grace. And I shall see him face to face, and tell the story saved by grace. Oh, that's good, isn't it? I'm like, uh, back to the nursery for you, but, uh, nobody, nobody quite blends like a mother and daughter blend together, amen? That's great, thank you. All right, take your Bible this evening, go to Matthew chapter 6, would you please? Matthew chapter 6 for our Bible study together this evening. We'll be looking, keep your Bible out, we're going to go to many different scriptures tonight, so you'll want to be ready to roll, because uh, you'll listen quickly, write quickly, because <clears throat> we'll move quickly, all right? Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse number 16. Matthew 6, verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. 
But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight, and Lord, our, as we begin to open up your word and study about this important subject tonight, I pray that, Holy Spirit, you'd give us understanding, that you would be our teacher this evening, and open up the word of God to us, and Lord, help us to completely uh, to begin to get a grasp, I guess, Lord, would be the best way to ask you to help us to begin to grasp this idea of prayer and fasting. And uh, just help us as we study your word now and uh, help each of us to give you our undivided attention these next few moments. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now this is the Sermon on the Mount as most of you recognize and Jesus taught about many things. Talked about almsgiving, which is giving to the poor. Uh, he talked about prayer. He talked about having treasure in heaven. He talked about our giving. Uh, he also talked about seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And then He also taught, as we saw here in verse 16, about fasting. And it is important to note, He didn't say, if ye fast. He said, when ye fast. Twice He reiterates, when you fast. Not, not it, it's something you might do, it's, uh, it's something that He fully intends for us to do. In fact, in Mark chapter 2, and verse, starting in verse number 18, let me read that for you, and you can flip there real quick if you want. But verse 18, the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Now, we're in those days. The bridegroom is taken away from us. He's ascended to heaven, and we're awaiting his return. And until then, we fast, all right? Now, what is fasting? Well, fasting, there's many things, but fasting is the afflicting of the soul. Fasting is the humbling of our flesh. Okay? It's the humbling of our flesh. You don't, you don't think it humbles your flesh? Try it. It'll humble your flesh. It's denying the flesh. The, the story, if you recall, in, in the, uh, did I put 2 Samuel on your paper? 2 Samuel, there, that's where uh, David, after he sinned Bathsheba and the child was sick, remember? David fasted and prayed and went in sackcloth until they said the child's dead. Then he washed and got dressed and, and, and went on, uh, it denying the flesh. You know what fasting is? It's letting go of the physical so you can lay hold of the spiritual. Letting go of the physical so you can lay hold of the spiritual. Now, there are different kinds of fasts. There are, there, there's number one, the supernatural fast. The supernatural fast, there's only two cases of it in the Bible. One was Moses, and the other was Jesus. Anybody know how long that fast was? Forty days and forty nights, nothing. No food, no water, nothing. Uh, that's supernatural. You don't want to do that, all right? You may not live to do the forty days. Uh, and so that's just something that God allowed those men to do. And, and that's supernatural fast. Then, number two, there's an absolute fast. Absolute fast. That's no food or no water. I mean, absolute fast. And, and when that happens, it, it probably ought to be three days at the most. After that, your body starts breaking down and it starts consuming itself. Okay? Three days normally is as long as you go without any food or water. Then... There's the third one, which is one most of us will practice, and that is the partial fast. That means that you'll not, you'll not have any food, but you will allow yourself water, uh, drink water during the fast. Some people will drink a little juice during the fast. I know uh, I, have some, I had some preacher's friends through the years who, who do a 40-day fast, but it's a partial fast. They, they drink juices throughout the 40 days. 
of fasting and seeking, but no food, okay? And they take a fast from that. And that can be any length of time that you determine uh, that it would be. And you can, you can any, whatever the Lord has uh, on, lays on your heart to be able to do. And again, uh, reiterate what Jesus said in Matthew 6. It isn't for you to announce to everybody what you're doing. You don't fast before men, and you don't, you don't appear like you're fasting. You know, and uh, just, uh, you, you, you don't, uh, it, it is to be done in secret. You're to be done, it's to be done for God. It's not to be done for man. And so you're to let God know, and God sees that. Now, look at Matthew chapter 17. Would you look there, please? Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew 17, you have the Mount of Transfiguration where Jesus goes up on the mountain and he was transfigured with Peter, James, and John. You remember Jesus was transfigured and they saw him become white and glistening and Moses and Elijah appeared there. Well, they came down from the mountain and when they got down from the mountain, verse 14, they were come down to the multitude. There came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son for he's a lunatic. He probably was 13. No, and sore vexed. And oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Well, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? Read the rest of the verse with me. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. How does this kind go out? Prayer and fasting. Now, if this kind only goes out by prayer and fasting, could we, uh, could we properly reason together that Jesus must have practiced prayer and fasting? Uh, he had the ability, he had the power to be able to cast that demon out, and he did. So this kind. In other words, Jesus is saying there are some things you're going to be able to, to take care of and some things you're going to be able to, to handle with prayer, but there are some times you're going to come across this kind of a need and that's going to require prayer and fasting. To lay hold of God and to afflict the soul and to humble yourself before God. Listen carefully. The American church is filled mostly with people who want to live their lives selfishly and yet enjoy God's blessings at the same time. We want both. Church is an addition designed to make my life more enjoyable. Church is a place to get a little help with a personal need and to hopefully find a few friends. That's what church is. And I'll submit to you, Christianity is much more than that. And that's why we have church that has a form of godliness and denies the power thereof. God's not going to give His power and supernatural presence to selfish people. God's power is reserved for those who will spend themselves in an unselfish way. Now we're going to look at some examples through the Scripture about people who fasted and prayed. All right, so get your Bibles ready. Get your fingers ready. Start back in the book of Nehemiah. Would you look there, please? I want you to go to the book of Nehemiah in chapter 1. Nehemiah 1. Verse 2. Let's start with verse 2. Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked him concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. 
The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And of course, it lists his prayer there that Nehemiah did. He, before he ever went to take care of the walls of Jerusalem, before he ever made the journey, before he ever approached the king, he fasted and prayed and asked God what he should do. Can I, can I submit to you, if we ever rebuild the walls in America, it won't be done without fasting and prayer? It won't be done without fasting and praying to get the walls of decency back or the walls of morality or the walls of integrity and the walls of doing what's right. And if we're going to get that, then we have to fast and pray. We want to, you see, we want the miraculous, but we don't want to fast and pray to get the miraculous. We still want everything that we want to do. We want the unusual, but we don't want to be uncomfortable. We want God's favor, but we don't... We want the extraordinary, but we want to do the ordinary. We just want God to do the extraordinary. So we have to be willing to pay the price. Now, go to Judges. Go back to your left. Go to Judges chapter 20. There's a very interesting battle recorded for us here in Judges 20. The tribes of Israel... Or uh, Benjamin has gone against the rest of the tribes of Israel. And they got some of the men of Gibeah to go along with them. And in Judges 20, verse 13, it says, Now for deliver, up, deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. Now watch, and the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, twenty and six thousand men that drew sword, beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered seven hundred chosen men. Among all this people there were seven hundred chosen men, left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at a hair breadth and not miss. Pretty, pretty solid guys there. And the men of Israel, beside Benjamin, were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All of these were men of war. So now you're going to have the battle. What's the battle? The battle's the, the, the tribes of Israel versus Benjamin and these guys from Gibeah. Now Benjamin had 26,000 and there's 700 Gibeonites, so 26,700. And how many uh, Israelites were there uh, in, in verse number 17? 400,000. So you got a battle, 400,000 versus 26,700. Piece of cake, you would think, right? Let's see what happened. Verse 18, the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. So listen, let me ask you a question. Did they pray? They went and inquired of God. They asked God what they should do, and God told them. Well, look what happened. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. First day's battle and the twenty-six thousand wiped out twenty-two thousand Israelites. Wait a minute, God. What, what's going on? What happened? Well, the people, the men, the people, the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array at the first day. Now watch. They don't just pray this time. Notice they go up, children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near again against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel again. How many? 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings for the Lord. 
So they went the first, they prayed and went up, lost 22,000. They prayed and wept and went up and lost 18,000. Now they come before the Lord and they, they pray and they weep and they fast until even. They offer their sacrifices. Now verse 27, the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the Ark of the Covenant was there in those days, and Phinehas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up for tomorrow and deliver them into thine hand. And then it talks about how, what they did uh, to, to the strategy that they used. And verse 32, the children of Benjamin said, They're smitten down before us, is it the first? But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw them away from the city under the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place, put themselves in array, and Baal Mar, and, and liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah ten thousand chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. Who smote Benjamin? The Lord did. And the children of Israel destroyed the Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and a hundred men, all that drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten, and the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites because they trusted under the liars in wait, which they had set beside Gibeah. And, and, and so God gave them the victory. But how did they get the victory? Was it by praying? No. Praying and weeping? No. Praying, weeping, and fasting. Praying and fasting. This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. All right? So we find that they fasted and prayed. Then uh, go to the book of Ezra. You were just in Nehemiah. Just go a little bit past the book of Nehemiah to the book of Ezra. I'm sorry, right before Nehemiah. Ezra chapter 8, please. Ezra chapter 8. Ezra, of course, is there to rebuild the temple. And in Ezra 8, here's what he did. Notice he says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek Him. But His power and His wrath is against all them that forsake Him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and He was entreated of us. Here's, here's Ezra fasting and praying. By the way, fasting and praying because he says, I'm, I was ashamed to go to the king to say, we need you to protect us. Because I told him, that the hand of God is upon us. If the hand of God is with us, why are we asking for your help? And so he said, we fasted and pray for protection from the enemy and for direction concerning our giving and our serving. And by the way, God entreated for them. God heard their prayer and he did protect them and he brought them safely home. So it's, it's okay and it's right to pray for, fast and pray for God's power, for God's protection, and for God's direction in your life. When you're not sure which way to go, you're not sure what's the right way for you or your family, then why don't you take time to fast and pray? Do you, do you, is it enough of a burden that you'd miss a meal for it? Is it enough of a burden that you'd want to just seek God alone for a day to get His direction? and to seek His guidance, and to let go of the physical, and let go of the flesh, and to, to, to seek His Spirit. That's what Ezra did. You know, we mentioned earlier that fasting humbles you. And fasting will humble you. And, and God gives grace to who? The humble. God will give His sufficiency to the humble. Here's an example of that, and an unlikely example. Most, most people don't realize it. 1 Kings chapter 21. Would you look there? 1 Kings chapter 21.
<clears throat> in 1 Kings 21, Elijah has come to pronounce judgment on Jezebel and Ahab. And he pronounces in uh, verse number 23 about Jezebel. He said, the dogs are going to eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. And that came to pass, by the way. It says, He that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dogs shall eat. Him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things, as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Now look what Ahab did. By the way, Ahab... Uh, good guy or bad guy? Huh, pretty bad guy. Wicked guy. But he heard the judgment of God through the mouth of Elijah. And here's what Ahab did. When Ahab heard these words, he rent his clothes, means he tore his clothes. He put sackcloth upon his flesh. And he did what? He fasted and lay in sackcloth and went softly. What happened? The word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, See thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. What do you call that? Grace. Grace. Don't, don't say, Oh, the God of the Old Testament was just the God of law. I'm glad I'm under grace. God's always been a God of grace. God's always been gracious, and He showed His grace there. God says, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. He's the, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so He's always the same. And so the same sort of thing happened, if you remember, in the story of Jonah going to Nineveh. Remember that? What happened when Nineveh heard the story of Jonah in judgment? They, he, the king proclaimed a fast. And by the way, everybody, even the animals were supposed to fast. You read it. It's an amazing thing. And God repented of the evil he thought to do to the Ninevites. And he didn't judge them. And that got Jonah upset. And that's a whole other story. But God responds. God gives grace to the humble. We know that Jesus fasted and prayed and had his 40-day fast at the beginning of his ministry. Paul said he was in fastings often. Okay, Nehemiah fasted. Ezra fasted. Different people through the Bible. Uh, Esther fasted. We, we studied that in Sunday school in Esther 4.3. Remember when, when finally it came, the decree was signed that all the Jews would be killed on a certain day? Mordecai came to her and said, you've got to go see the king. She said, man, it's been a year since he's asked for me or called for me. I can't just go in there. And she said, okay, here's what you do. You fast and pray for me for three days. And my maidens and I will fast for three days. They entreated the Lord. And when she went in and and, and they said, Esther's here to see you. What did he do? He raised the scepter and said, you come on in. Huh? That, was, that was God being gracious to somebody who fasted and prayed. Look at Daniel chapter 6. <clears throat> Go to Daniel chapter 6. <clears throat> Daniel 6. Daniel 6 is Daniel in the lion's den here. Most of you know, he got thrown in the lion's den for praying, and the king was sleepless all night, you remember? And the stone was, well, well verse, verse 17, it says, A stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the, the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might be not changed, be concerning Daniel. Look at verse 18. The king went to his place, and he passed the night how? Fasting. The king fasted all night. That's interesting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. And then the king rose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of the lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? And Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths. They have not hurt me, 
For as much as forty minutes since he was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. And of course Daniel was taken up, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And there's there's God being there's God being very gracious to again a king who fasted and humbled himself before God. Okay? And so God is very gracious there in 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 he gives grace to the humble. You say, man, I'd like to see things like that in my life. Are you willing to fast and pray? Are you willing to do the do something out of the ordinary so God will do the extraordinary? Like to see miracles like that? Will you fast and pray? Like to see the power of God on display? Would you fast and pray to see that? Remember, not long ago we, we were in Acts 10 and talked about Cornelius and how God had sent Peter to talk to him. And Cornelius was one in, in Acts chapter 10 and verse 30 who, who says, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And that's where the angel came and appeared before Cornelius. Why? He was fasting and praying. And at that point, he wasn't even saved yet. He wasn't a believer yet. He, Peter hadn't come tell him about Jesus yet. Fasting and praying. Long to see people get right with God? Will you fast and pray for them? You long to see loved ones saved? Will you fast and pray for them? You have wayward son or daughter? Will you fast and pray for them? This kind, this kind cometh not forth, but by prayer and fasting. Where, where you let go of the physical and you seek God. You just give yourself to seeking His face. Jesus never said if you fast. He said when you fast. Now, I want you to turn over in your Old Testament to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. This is the most explicit chapter in the Bible when it comes to fasting and what the Lord teaches about fasting. Here the children of Israel were kind of upset because God wasn't answering their prayers. And they were getting upset with God. And here's what God said, Isaiah 58. In fact, look at verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, said they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? He's saying, yeah, you're fasting, but, but you've got some other problems. He says, you're, you're fasting, but I noticed your exploitation of other people. I noticed how you treat other people when you're supposed to be fasting. Uh, yes, and it doesn't do any good to be, to be fasting before God and then bite people's head off. That's why I, I always get grouchy when I'm hungry. Well, you're not seeking God. You're thinking about your hunger then you're not really seeking the Lord. They weren't treating others right. They were quarreling with each other. You find out later on they were withholding food and clothing and shelter from the poor. So they, they in other words, listen, they were, they were outwardly appearing very pious, and yet in their heart they were wicked. And they didn't want to treat people right. It would be equivalent to what people are sometimes on Sunday and what they are the rest of the week. Don't, don't be one way at church and someone's really different when you go home. You, God's, God's looking at the condition of your heart. And, and that's why He told them, I'm not, I'm not uh, answering and I'm not hearing your prayer. That's not the fast that I chose. That's what the Lord said. 
What kind of fast did the Lord choose? Look at verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? All right? Here's when you fast in the way God wants you to fast and to seek His face. Look what happens. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? There's the fast that God chose. Number one, you loose the bands of wickedness. Any, any you know, some wickedness have a hold of you? Some some sin that, that besets you? You'd like to be free of that? How about fasting and praying? But the Corinthian touches on this when he when he, he calls it this. He said, you know, you you what, what some appetites have to be what? Starved. That's fasting. That's fasting. What do you do? You know, you you'll never satisfy the fleshly appetite by indulging in it. In fact, once you feed the appetite. Wow. Lay's potato chips. Remember those? You can't eat just one. I think the same thing's true about Oreo cookies, too, by the way. You can't eat just one. Help me. You know why? You just get an appetite for more. And you can't satisfy it by indulging in it. What do you got to do? You got to starve fat. You have to absolutely starve it. And, and that's fasting. It'll, it'll loose the bands of that. By the way, can I, can I say that, and, and this isn't part of this now, but you know, in, in our day, there, there's not only the, the food that you can fast from, there's, there's probably other things we could fast from. Fast from the television. Fast from the computer. Fast from your phone for a day. Boy, I'd love to do that. You know, you can. There, there are things that that you take pleasure in. I, I'm, I'm shocked. Have you seen that? Uh, they they put on Facebook. You know, if somebody says you go three months with no television, no computer, and no phone, three months, and at the end of three months, somebody will give you three million dollars. Could you do it? I'm amazed at the people who say they can't do it. I say, man, bring it on. <laughs> I'll see you in three months. <laughs> Man, you just have me a list of missionaries ready when I'm done, all right? Get the gospel out. And, but, you know, that's, you know what it is? We're, 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 we're held by those things. We become a slave to those things. Anything, anything that you, somebody says, why don't you give that up for a day? And you're like, oh, man. Well, then it's got you. It's got you. Then it says, number two, he said, notice he says, you undo the heavy burdens. Anybody ever carry a heavy burden? Do you like to get the heavy burden undone? Fast and pray. God says, that's the fast I chose. When you fast and pray the way I choose, you can undo the heavy burdens. You can break every yoke. You can break the yoke of bondage. You can break that if you'll just fast and pray. That's what God said. Now, there are rewards. Notice what he said. No, verse number 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. First of all, he says, number one, the, the light will break forth as the morning. Light in the Bible is always an indication of spiritual direction. Once you're saved, we're said to be walking in the light. We have spiritual direction. The world does not have that. They're, called, they're said to be in darkness. Okay? Darkness is you lack any spiritual direction at all. God says, you want some spiritual direction? You want to know you're headed? He said, that's one of the results you'll get when you fast and pray. 
But not only spiritual direction, he says, number two, you'll get physical health. It is healthy for you to fast. It is not bad for you. It is good for you. Uh, they, they say just if it were not even spiritually to uh, always put prayer with the fasting, if you just fasted one day a week, it's healthy for you. And drank water. It, it, it resets the system and flushes things out, and you're better for it. You're a healthier person. Number three, you get guidance. He says, Thy righteousness shall go before thee. Notice he reiterates that down in verse number 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and shall satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. That's health, my friend. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Huh? That's health. And that's guidance. They'll go before thee. And the righteousness, by the way, our righteousness is Jesus Christ. He goes before us. But that's not all. We also have protection because it says, The glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. You say, what in the world is the re-reward? It's the rear guard, my friend. You know how you'd say it today? You'd say, God would say, I have your back. Okay? So God said, Jesus said, hey, when you fast and pray, you'll have guidance. I'll go before you. I'll know the path you should go. But wait a minute. I've got behind you too. And I, I've got your rear reward. I, I got your back. And God protects us from the rear. And then he's not done. What else does he say? Look at verse 9. Thou shalt call, and what will happen? The Lord will answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say what? Here I am. Wow. How great is that? God says, you'll have answers to prayer. You'll call, and I will answer. You'll cry to me, and I'll say, here I am. At your service. What, what would you like? You see, what benefits to prayer and fasting? How, how, how shameful that we do so little of it. We become a slave to our appetites. We really do. It's something that, that I, I, I trust as we go through this month of March and, and we practice the prayer and fasting and, and we begin to see the benefits of it, it'll be something that will make a regular part of our life when we see God work and we see God do things. See, fasting and prayer, as we've seen, listen, fasting and prayer does change the mind of God at times. It did with Ahab and it did with the people of Nineveh. But you know what fasting and prayer really does? It changes us. It changes us. It puts us, it, it draws us away from the world and closer to God. You take that time you'd spend on the physical and on the flesh and you use it seeking God and feeding your spirit and seeking Him in prayer. And boy, you feed your spirit. And you starve the flesh. It's amazing things take place when that happens. Prayer and fasting. This kind cometh not forth, but by prayer and fasting. Let's stand together, shall we? And we'll pray. Father, thank you for this evening now. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study your word together. This all-important subject of prayer and fasting. Lord, thank you so much for putting so many examples in We've just kind of skimmed across the surface of this subject and throughout the Scripture. There's so much, much more we could look into and we could understand. And I pray, Lord, that you would touch the hearts of many in this room who they're facing in their lives right now this kind. They need this kind of an answer. May they be willing to fast and pray for it. Lord, some need to break the bands of wickedness and they need to break the yoke from off their neck the way they can do that is through prayer and fasting 
Lord, I pray that you'd help us to take the truths we've been reminded of tonight and we've learned this evening and help us to live the Bible we've learned. Give us your help and your power, please. Dismiss us now with your care. Give us safety as we go our separate ways. Make us mindful you go with us from this place. And Lord, help us to please you in all we do now this week. With the weather nicer and us being able to be outside, Lord, help us to tell somebody about Jesus this week. Give us souls to be saved, and Lord, help us to be about your business. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing it. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Here we go. Hey, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God bless you. You're dismissed. <laughs>